Welcome back, my lovelies. This is like the 11th video, I think, in this series. So we're back here in the future. So what we're doing now, uh, last week we looked at the work section. We built the thumbnails and uh, actually the week before last. And then last week we talked about the hover states and made some cool animations for them. This week we're going to do the exciting work of figuring out what happens when you click on the thumbnails. Now this is interesting because we have no design for this. I literally haven't thought about it at all. And, I've, and I'm trying to, I'm trying to uh, make the, these videos as candid as possible, no rehearsing, no pre-coding and seeing if things work. And that's why I think I've had so many pull requests for this uh, video series because I've been making a lot of mistakes, which is normal, which is part of the course of developing something. We're doing good guys. I think that uh, this is a really good series and I'm really excited about the way things are going and the contributions that I'm getting. Thank you so much for going to GitHub and submitting pull requests and making this even more awesome than, uh, than the high level of awesomeness that it was before. <laughs> anyway, so like I said, today we are going to look at uh, what happens when I clicky click. So currently what happens when I click, let's try it. Click, nothing, okay. Take a look at the includes, I'm gonna take a look at the work section here. Now each of these thumbnails is printed out as a thumb unit and they're a div and that's okay we'll just leave that there for now let me get rid of a little bit of unnecessary white space and tighten this up a bit because what I'm going to be doing now is deciding how I can bring in the content that the thumb container is referencing right so when somebody clicks on a thumb I want to bring in new content I want to bring in the expanded version of the website and that's gonna happen by, I'm gonna make a sibling of, of thumb container, call it div uh, class work container. Yeah, look, it's not a section. Work container, and it's a sibling of, of thumb container. And in here, I'm gonna say uh, do work. Just make that a big old and this is going to be the title of the project right and then there's going to be like an image here so I'll just make a placeholder div and I'll style it just right here just so I can I mean sometimes I do this I create like really small simple styles in line so I can create false objects so I don't have to like go find the actual image and stuff so this is what I'm talking about uh, um, I'm gonna say width uh, you know, 500 pixels, I guess. Height, again, 500 pixels, I don't know. And background, uh, CCC. So it's just like a gray square, 500 by 500 pixels. And below that, I'll have a paragraph of lorem, which I can get by doing that. Just a few words. And then we'll repeat that twice because maybe I want this to be like a series, you know, a series of photographs and explanations. There's three of them. Okay. So now that I have this here, I need to figure out a way to kind of bring it in, get rid of the thumbs, and then when I'm done with it, bring it out and bring the thumbs back. And I think I might want to do like a sliding transition. So since they're siblings, I'll wrap them in a parent and I'll call that div uh, work, no class of work dash slider. I don't know. Yeah, I don't really like that name, but you get the idea and then I'll close out this div right here highlight everything and indent one okay so work slider is gonna wrap around both of my work container and my thumb container I'm gonna call it a belt because like like a conveyor belt like it convey conveys the okay so uh, let's jump back to the work SAS and all of this code here, this whole page has just been about 
these thumbnails and that's fine that's cool but um, above that is the uh, just newly named work uh, what I call it belt work belt I'm using this thumb container to constrain the max width of these thumbnails groupings to 960 but I need an element that's going to be around the margins of that 960 right so like I need an element that's going to go 100% width of the page because what I want to do is I want to say that this work belt is going to be the width is 200 percent and it's going to go right off the page mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I want this section work section I want to go to section work oops ah, belt and say that your overflow dash x is hidden so that when it's 200 percent it's going off and it's not going to like create this weird like sideways scrolling thing it's just going to be gone out and hidden on the x so work section overflow hidden x the work belt is 200 percent let me put a color on this back uh, ground pink so we can kind of see if we're doing the right thing right now uh, this is gonna be bad no this is gonna be fine okay refresh this is bad okay this is not horrible but it's not what I wanted but it I did I knew that this was not gonna be what I wanted because I know that we're not doing it. I just wanted to take a you know a check I wanted to, I just wanted to check what am I trying to say I just wanted to take a Temp the temperature. I just wanted to take the temperature of what we have so far. Now this is, let me show you what we have so far. We have a 200% box, which is this pink box, and it's stretching from here and twice as far out. And you'll notice that you can only see four of the work thumbnails because there's, there are eight, um, you know, they're, they're uh, four by two by four. So, um, you can only see half of it, which means it's dead center still with a max width of 960, and then the margins are centering it, and that's good. And then below that, I ha still ha I have a 200% another container, which is the work container, the, the H4, and then the three gray boxes that I wanted. This is exactly what I was hoping to get. And what's nice about it is that see how there's no horizontal scrolling? That is the key. That overflow X is gonna stop my you know page from looking all wonky because I'm gonna try to hide this do work section I'm gonna try to hide the working container off screen and then like try to you know slide it in when when you want it um, but I have to wrap this I have to wrap them both so let me show you how I'm gonna do that I'm gonna I'm gonna call this I'm gonna do another one div here class thumb wrap div indent yeah, yeah. div class work wrap indent boom oh, I just said boom I hate that word boom yeah. and now what I'll do I'll go up here to I'll create a class for work wrap and thumb wrap Actually, I think it was thumb wrap, thumb wrap, work wrap, right? So, okay, and then I want to say that their width is going to be one hundred percent, one hundred fifty-five. What? Uh, one hundred percent, and the float <laughs> left. Okay. Now, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen, and then we're seeing if I'm right or if I'm crazy. So I'm going to, 100% refers to the width of the parent. I might be crazy, but I'm hoping it's the width of the document. That wouldn't make sense. It's probably not going to change anything, except for the floating left. Okay, that, was, that did nothing. So what I need to do fifty percent. Fifty percent. 
their width has to be 50% because 50% of 200% of the document is 100% of the document. That's how you do math, kids. So let's refresh and here we are. We have a really tall box, but that's okay, we'll fix that. But our, again, we are centered, and if I make this smaller, it, it does what we wanted to. Oh, perfect, just perfect. Uh, make it bigger, it's centered again with uh, our thing. So now if we go in here to our work belt, background pink. Now the reason we can't see pink is because background is, uh, it, these are floated elements, so they're, the, the height of this thing is zero. Let me say, um, first of all, I need to say the position is going to be relative to its current position. And then I'll say left negative 100%. Refresh. All right, see, so my work section, uh, my work, what did I call it? My work wrap, my work container is now in the center of the page, right? Work container and my thumb container right here is, is you know, 100% off of the page off to the left, right? It was, so it's like that. That is what we got going on. I think that's super fantastic. This is exactly what we want. While we're here, let's not go back to the thumb container until we have styled the work document. What does it look like when when somebody is viewing your work? Okay. And that is going to be work container. All right, we're going to jump down here. Actually, we're going to just it's going to be exactly this. Now you might be asking, why didn't I just put a comma and then put work container? I could, but I didn't because there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff in here, a lot of children of the thumb container, and the minute I put a comma and then a new selector, it means I have a new parent selector on all of these two. So I'm doubling up on all of these unnecessary selectors. So it's 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 outputting a lot more cruft in my CSS than I need than just creating this one small extra selector. Work container, okay. It's gonna be 960 with a margin zero auto, which means it's gonna be 960 in the center. One thing I wanna do is I wanna make sure that all my images are max width 100%. So if somebody comes in behind me and puts in like really like a thousand pixels wide images, I can't stop them from doing that, but I can stop their thousand wide pixels image from going a thousand pixels wide. So I'm gonna say the width, the maximum width that an image can be is 100% of its parent, which is gonna be 960, okay? Yeah. Um, okay, it's kind of wide. I want it to be 600. What are you gonna do about that? Yeah, I like it better. I like it better. And I'm gonna go to the work section and I'm gonna say a width is gonna be 600 to all these like fake images. Just so I can feel what they're like to be 100% wide. Good, 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 good. It's already shaping up to be an exciting little thing. Okay, uh, how about we do Uh, we need to address this headline, which is like a H5, I said it was, right? H4? Okay, it's an H4. Let's talk about this headline, H4. Color is a is accent. And the, I want it to be reminiscent of I want it to be reminiscent of the title that of the thumbnail that we just clicked on. And that's gonna be right here. Font 300, transform uppercase, this stuff. 
Yeah, baby. Okay, cool. That looks good. So do work, and then there's some paragraphs. I want to make sure that the paragraphs have... Okay, images are going to have a margin bottom 20 pixels, like our paragraphs do. Oh, these are not images. <laughs> okay, let's say they did. Let's say, okay. Hmm. And then, do work. That's good, that's good. Now there needs to be a way to get back to the thumbnail group. And for that, I made this icon here in Illustrator. It's basically at one of the crispy icons flipped around and put inside of a circle. I made that in Illustrator and I exported it to the SVG um, using the same process that I described in earlier videos. So here I am. Uh, I'm going to inject this uh, icon back. I'm going to inject this into my HTML. And I want to do it so where this icon shows up near the title. Uh, so let's run into our work HTML. And I'll, I'll wrap it in a div class. Um, let's call it work return. That'll be fine. And then we need to we need to call that HTML. We need to call that uh, SVG that's that's in HTML right now, and that's include icons uh, slash icon dash uh, back dot HTML. All right, let's see what it looks like. Son of a wow! It pushed it down quite a bit. Okay, all right, that happens from time to time. So let's see the let's run over to our SAS and start right here work dash return and I need to put a size on that to get this big old height uh, resolved size and I'm gonna have it be squared at 40 pixels because that's what size this frame here is this white frame 40 so we'll do 40 pixels uh, Let's just see how that works, actually. Okay, yeah, that's kind of what I want. But if this is going to be a link, I want it to have uh, the style of a link. So I want to get the cursor uh, pointer. And then, so it is a SVG. So I want to say the child of the work return, that's the path. Uh, we want you to have a fill color of uh, RGBA, let's just make it a lighter gray. So um, that's actually make it transparent to 40%. Uh, and then when you hover over work return, so I'll put and hover, it's going to, I just want to take the whole thing, opacity, down to 50%, so 0 0.5. All right, let's see how that works. All right, so it's gray and I hover over it and I got a finger and it and it grays out even more. I like it. Maybe I should actually reverse that. So let's take it opacity of one and then the work return is normally opacity of 0 0.5. Let's check that out. Oh, that's 0 0.1. No, I want 1. I like that. Like, it, it darkens up when I hover over it, making it more more like, yeah, click me, click me, click me, instead of fading out, which says, ooh, don't click me. So that's good. I like that. Now, I don't want it to sit above the headline here. So I'll take it, and I'll move it around by using position abso absolute and uh, I want to say null from the top, null from the right, null from the bottom, but let's say negative like 50 pixels. Well, it's actually 40, so maybe 20 between it and the text. This should collapse because it'll be absolute and then pull it over negative 20 pixels. Let's see, okay. That worked, but not as n not enough. Oh, sorry, 60. Let's do 60, so it's 40 plus 20. 
That's what I intended to do. Okay, cool. That looks good, but it's a little vertically off. So uh, let's say negative five pixels here. Move it up a bit. That looks good, maybe a little bit too much. Four. That looks good. I like that. Okay, so when I'm in the work, I'll just clickety click click this button and that will take me back to the thumbnails. One other concern I have with this though is that when I'm on a mobile device, because we're building a responsive site, this is going to be a problem. It's just sticking out too far. So I need to put a catch in there using and media max width. Now we remember that this is 600 pixels and then this is sticking out 60. So 60 plus 60 is 120 because we want to consider how it sits in the middle sticking out 120. So uh, that's 720 and we'll just say 740 for a little padding sake. 740 pixels. Uh, we're going to say take the position um, and make it relative. Let's just make it this whole mix in again. So position relative um, zero pixels from the top, null from the uh, right, null from the bottom, zero from the uh, left, and then we'll close that. Okay, let's check it out. All right, when I get closer, okay, it it goes back to where it was initially. Okay, now this is all well and nice. It feels like a back button. It's you know it, it points towards the thumbnails that we just came from. So it, I think it the positioning and the um, rel the relative spacing between this and the label and also where you just came from works really well. But when we um, put this in a smaller browser and that link collapses, it looks kind of clumsy there. It still makes sense. It's still doable, I guess. But it just looks a little bit clumsy. Maybe we should get this, this icon in front of... Mm, let me take this media. Okay, I want to... put that down here and then I can start from the top work container you're gonna be in there buddy um, work return you're gonna be in there and as also is the h4 okay now I'm thinking that I'll take the work return and I'll make the top the top is fine I want to make the left go to zero pixels so I want it to be I want it to I want it to impact that text let's see if it works refresh oh cuz it no I don't want it to go relative okay great that's what I wanted so I want this arrow to just kind of jump backwards to be on top of that text. Now I can take that text and stick it out with a margin uh, left of, what was it, 60? 60 pixels. There we go. So now it just kind of jumps in line right there. Oh, that's much better. I like that a lot better. Okay, cool. So. Yeah, when, it, when I click it, it'll jump back to my thing. Now that we've got this work section kind of styled relatively how we want it, we need to, um, I don't, before I populate it with images and stuff, I want to get that interaction down of switching between uh, the thumbnails and the work sections, basically that slide around. And that's going to be pretty simple. Let me show you how that's done. We're going to crack open the functions for the first time ever in this project, and we're going to write a function that when we click the thumbnail, it will jump over to the work section, and then when we click the close button, it will jump back over to the thumbnails. Let's do that then. So what I want to do is I'll write, um, the function will be called work 
work belt. Right, that's the reference to the function that says that when the page loads, make this function available to run or, or run it anyhow. And the function will say, what's this called? Work belt. This is the function. Everything inside these two um, mustache brackets are going to be what the function is, okay? I'm not giving lessons in jQuery at the moment, but um, I'll kind of talk you through the logic of the function, and then like maybe in another video series I'll talk about you know, the ins and outs of, of JavaScript and jQuery. Sorry guys, this is just, just bear with me right here. Okay, so let's say, jQuery, please listen up. We are gonna say, look for all of the, what are these things called? Work section, these things are called thumb units. Look for all the thumb units. And then when somebody clicks on one, this is going to happen. Everything inside these two parentheses will happen when somebody clicks on a thumb unit, right? And that's going to be this. Take the, what is this thing called? The work belt? Is that the 200 pixel wide one? Or the 200, yeah, 200 percent wide? Work belt. And move it, uh, we'll say left, is that, I don't know, I'll do this, left, left, uh, negative 100 pixels, uh, percent. Done. That's what you're going to do. That's all you do. And then when somebody, listen up jQuery, when somebody clicks the, what, what do we call, oops. What do we call this thing, the close button? Work return, that's a weird name. Work ret thumb return, work, re no, work return is fine. Uh, work return, when somebody clicks this, Um, take this work belt and put it at left 0%. And I need to default the left at 0% and put a transition on it. That should be good. Let's see how he worked out. So we've got these thumbnails. We click on one and the work slides in. It goes back. It goes in. It goes back. I go back. I go back. Okay, the only problem I have right here is that you look at the horizontal position. Let me put out a rule here. Let me put a rule here where the top of these things are. And click one of these and see where the top of this thing is. So, what's up with this? What's up with this? I would like this headline to be right at the top of this. Let's figure that out. I'll tell you what that is. That's a weird margin top from the headline. So we're just going to go to that H4 down here and say margin zero pixels auto. No, it's just zero. 0, 0, 0020. You could do with it. You could see there you go. Perfect. Okay. That's what I wanted. Like that and like that. It's quite nice. But here's the problem. When I'm back in my thumbs, I still have the height of the work container dictating how tall this work section is. Uh, before I added the work section, the container ended like right here and that was quite nice. But now I have this big long work container and that's a problem. So what I want to do is come over to here and say in both instances, grab the work uh, 
container. And in, and uh, let's see. Actually, for this one, all right. When you click the work return, I'm going to take that work container and I'm going to hide it. And then when you click the, um, the thumb unit, I'm going to take the work container and show it. And I need to set the work container display none by default. And let's take a look at what we got. All right, normal, happy old uh, work thumbnails. Click on them, and they jump into the work container, which is looking good and nice and tall. Slide out. Here they come back. Yeah. Good, good, good. I could do this, though, because you see how when I click on it, when, so you see it disappears before it slides away. Now it's going so fast, I guess it doesn't really matter. But if I wanted to slow that down a little bit, like where's that transition? I'm going to slow that down to um, all 800 milliseconds. See it disappears? kind of strange. Really easy fix to do that is to take this hide call in jQuery and transition it over the 800 milliseconds. And that way it won't disappear but it will fade in color or fade in opacity meanwhile maintaining its um, dimension as it slides out. So let me show you what that's like. So I'll slide it in as you're used to and then when I slide it out it's still going to be there just fading out as it goes and which is a nice effect but it also keeps the shape um, I mean you, you can see it leaving and, and that's exactly what I wanted and, and then all we also have when it's gone the bottom will cinch up to where it should be so I'm happy I'm happy for now I think there's still a few more optimizations we can do on this effect but the majority of what we need to do now in the work section is to just fill in the work and um, kind of make that a comfortable experience for the, the owner of the site. I hope this has been a good video for you guys. I feel like uh, it was kind of like, because I had no design for it or no idea what it should be, it was kind of like, oh, maybe this and maybe that, you know, but I don't know, sometimes when you're, I don't know, designing like in the browser, that's gonna be your experience. Um, so yeah, I. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the doodle below. I love to hear from you guys. And thanks to all the contributors of the um, artist theme on GitHub. Uh, your pull requests are kind of stacking up and, and I'm excited to get to them, but I'm really anxious to get through the work section before I do get to them. So um, keep on doing what you're doing and I'll see you guys next Monday. Keep on hacking.